both by the alarming levels of spread and severity. Continues to see increasing cases in so many areas of the country. Democratic rights guaranteed and an inquiry into police brutality. Welcome to Revolution Bible Study. My name is Chaplain Yvonka Fairby. I am your host for the show. If you haven't seen our show before, what we like to do here at Revolution Bible Study is create a platform so that people from all different walks of life can rightly divide the Word of God, not just for the sake of debating the Word, not just for the sake of being right or somebody else being wrong, but it's so that we have a more clear understanding with iron sharpening iron so that we can all grow in God and not only know the Word of God better but the the desire is to know the person of Jesus Christ more intimately through this platform and we do that through a variety discussing a variety of subject matters and um, they've been we've had some great subjects that we've discussed uh, on this show and the topic for today is, is tithing for the church today as tithing a part of the culture today and I'm excited to get into the discussion and I hope you are too and we have another one of our guest clergy for today that I'd like to introduce to you it is Pastor Michael Hopper of, Ch of the Los Angeles Church of Deliverance welcome to the show uh, Pastor Hopper oh, thank you would you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry uh, my wife and I, we started Los Angeles Church of Deliverance about five years ago. Uh, this was after we were trained in the Ministry of Deliverance from Pastor uh, Monty Moki for about 16 years. And uh, Pastor Moki uh, was trained by a gentleman by the name of Pastor Wynn Worley out in the Chicago area. But the Ministry of Deliverance is quite unique, uh, but it is part of, we believe, uh, the part of salvation, healing, and deliverance. Uh, that which is obstructing are hindering people of God from flowing with the gifts uh, that God has given them to be able to make the impact on this world mm -hmm. that God wants them, created them to make, mm -hmm. uh, that there may be demonic influences, yeah. demonic blockage that's hindering it. People find themselves, uh, can't seem to stop doing things that they know are harmful. Yeah. Uh, we're the place where they come to where we help them in Jesus' name stop that from happening continuing to happen, yes. so yeah. Yes, and thank you and your, to you and your wife, your lovely wife, for that ministry because it is quite a unique ministry and it is much needed in the body of Christ. So thank you for serving um, our community thank you. with that ministry. Thank you. All right, and so how about you, um, uh, Reverend Lamont Coleman? Um, my name is Lamont Coleman, um, Biblical Films. Um, pretty much me and my wife was helping a lot with nonprofit, with Coleman Smith Artistic helping actors. Slowly it became a ministry where we have been basically taking the word to places that the word sometimes have problems getting into. Mm -hmm. uh, we do theatrical presentations and we do films. Uh, with the theatrical presentations we take them into the prisons, uh, we also take them to different churches, we take them to the youth, to the different schools, we take it to the homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, with the films we take it to their living room the word, where mm -hmm. the people can't get up in the morning, they can't make it to church. Mm -hmm. um, with us, it has been a ministry that we have been also expiring to, to expand, and we have been developing a channel, and that's what the BFN channel is about. Mm -hmm. mm. Wonderful. And thank you very much for those introductions, and wel welcome to the show. Thank you. What we're mm -hmm. going to talk about today, we're going to get right into it. The topic today is, is tithing for today's church? in today's culture. Is tithing for the church for today or the culture for today? That's a big, big question that many people have and I've mm. you know in, in the circles that I'm in as well, people want to know, you know, is you know, people are real big on tithing and, you know, giving the tenth um, of their income and then some people say that's that's not scriptural anymore. Mm. So let's see 
what the Word of God has to say about this when we are talking to our guest clergy today. So welcome to our show again. And let's start with uh, Pastor Michael Hoffer. What would you say to the question, is tithing for the church today? Is it a part of, a, is it scriptural for our culture today? It's a great question. Uh, I, I think about what came up for me was uh, Psalms 24, uh, putting things in perspective where the, it says the earth is the Lord, it's the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and uh, they that dwell therein. Mm -hmm. So it, it puts things in context that really none of this belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, the money that we have right. doesn't really belong to us. Our lives don't even really belong to us. Everything belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really more of a heart matter where he, he, he looks to see, will we give back even a little bit of what he's endowed and given us? Mm -hmm. uh, the Matthew 6, 24 says we can't serve two masters mm -hmm. uh, for either you'll hate one and, and love the other mm -hmm. or you'll hold on to one and despise the other. We can't mm -hmm. serve money and God. And so really, it's, it's really, and that can't, those are Jesus' words in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, money is really put up there as a way of, of really countering mm -hmm. our allegiance mm -hmm. and yeah. our faithfulness and our following of God. Because if it's, if it's a matter of, I'm gonna hold on to my money, that preacher wants my money, it, then, then what we're really saying is, uh, I despise God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and if we say I, we have a love, and I, I was guilty of this for the longest. I mean, I was in there like, I, I, I want to you know, get rich. I want to be rich. But there was a love of money. Mm -hmm. right. and, and really what I was doing with my actions, I was, I was really telling God I hate him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it still is relevant today. Uh, I mean, people always talk about the, the Malachi 3 mm -hmm. uh, verse when it comes down to bring me all the tithes into yeah. the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house. Mm -hmm. And he says, prove me there, therein if I will not rebuke the devourer for your sake mm -hmm. so that it will not uh, destroy the fruit of your ground. Well, if people are still finding their stuff getting devoured today, mm -hmm. if people are not enjoying the fruit of their labor because it's getting devoured and tore up, mm -hmm. could it be that it might be stemming back to us not tithing? Could it be that we're not giving to God, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. down to it? Mm -hmm. And we're suffering the consequences of it today. I mean, I, I can personally say for myself, just the whole notion of, of just tithing and giving back to God, my, my, my household finances have improved dramatically three yes. times. Yes. Three, 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 three times over, three mm -hmm. score. Uh, I, my credit score is going up. I mean, over 100. You know, it feels good. Because I remember what it was like having all my stuff devoured. I remember yeah. what it was Amen. like just not living from, from, from paycheck to paycheck and yeah. not having enough money at the end of the month. Yeah. He also says in his word where, prove me and I will not pour, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, mm -hmm. that you will, there will not be room enough to receive. Now that sounds really good, Amen. right? You know, but then who's really living it? You know, and, and I, can, I can honestly say, uh, ma'am, that right now I'm experiencing a little, it took some time and he had to really prove me because again, there was a whole lot of love of money from me, mm -hmm. but really proving that it's not money that dictates my life, but it's really God that should dictate. And the rewards have been, he's been pouring out more and more to me now that more to the point where I can give, not just to the church, but other folks. Like, like the brother said in regards to if it was somebody on the street, if, it was some, if God, if the Holy Spirit said, I want you to give here and do this, mm -hmm. then I'm doing it. Because the other mindset he's given me, it's taken a while, but it doesn't belong to me anyway. It all yeah. belongs to him. And I would agree, agree it's a hard issue. Because I'm going to mm. tell you how, why I had to learn it, is that as a believer, you know, I believe in tithing and giving. You know, it's 10% to tithe, everything over that is to get. Because that's the way I was taught, mm -hmm. right? I was at a point... For many years, 30% of my annual income, I, I was given to the church. Wow. And, and I was increasing, but I ended up losing everything. Hmm. I had something happen and I lost everything hey everywhere. But okay. um, it was something that God was allowing to get my attention because uh. of heart issues. Oh. So it doesn't mm. matter that I gave 30% mm. because he wanted me. Not mm. my money. money. <laughs> so that was, that was, that's a whole another thing. And let's hear from Reverend uh, Lamont. What, what would you say about it? Is tithing for today? Is it for today? Uh, well, okay, there's two things I want to, before I go into it. <clears throat> um, 
Let's go to Leviticus. Well, excuse me, let's go here. Numbers 18, 21. Mm -hmm. To the Levites, I have given every tithe in Israel for inheritance in return for their service that they do. Their service is, the, is in the tent of meetings. Now, again, a lot of things were happening. The tithing, the mm -hmm. process was because of the Levites in the temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's where a lot of people would say, okay, tithing is mm -hmm. not there anymore because the temple is gone. Mm -hmm. And from there they say, okay, if, if the temple's gone, then we shouldn't be tithing because a lot of those Levites practicing, well, again, was again, their harvests, the animals, sacrifice, mm -hmm. you can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So then I go mm -hmm. up to also to Matthews, Matthews to go to the New Testament, mm -hmm. Matthews 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mints and deals and comments and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Mm. Okay, justice and mercy and faithfulness. Though these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Who is the other there? Is that your fellow man, your brother, mm. and stuff like that? So then we come to the modern day, you got again churches are getting up there and say, okay, we need your tithe. Okay, maybe we shouldn't call it tithes anymore if tithes was all in the Old Testament. Then mm. it's just an offering because we're not tithing anymore. And then from there, from the offering, okay, you're asking for all this money for who? Or is you asking what, to build a bigger edifice? Okay, I, I hear you there. Or you're asking for what, taking the money somewhere else? What about your fellow man that's in your same neighborhood who, number one, having problems with their rent? or having problems getting the car payment, or problems just to eat. Are you thinking about them in this process? And that's where, again, a lot of people are very leery about because they're seeing uh, pastors with jets and planes. They see them with the Cadillacs, and then they driving the little bug, okay? And, it, and, and, and don't yeah, get me wrong, I'm a tither. I mean, excuse me, I, I, I believe, and you can still call it because Jesus did not take away. I, 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 I follow that. But again, at the same time, though, Jesus said, too, don't come here giving him the offering and stuff. If your fellow man, yeah. you would have a conflict or problem right. with, it's you go heart. take right. care of that first before you come and, and, and give your tithes and stuff. Mm -hmm. That means that that means if you got a debt in the bill, you got to pay, go pay your bills first. Mm -hmm. Then run and have to give to the church. Mm -hmm. OK, and, and again, I know that the, the needs of the church and ministry, I'm in it, too. We need it. We biblical films. We need your support. Mm -hmm. But also, you got to pay your rent and take care of your bills and take care of your bills and the rent. And I think mm -hmm. also as a church, we need to clarify that for the people mm -hmm. so they're not feeling pressure that they don't feel that maybe I'm doing something wrong. OK, I, and I felt I had the same story with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I gave him my heart. Don't get me wrong. My heart was in it because I believe and I tested him and he came through. Okay. So I was like, OK, let's keep this going. Mm -hmm. But then, boom, the season changed. Why? And I agree with you. God is saying, OK, did you forsake your first love? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. And I think a lot of people also are going through that same walk that I'm going through, who has done everything they're supposed to. And they're still struggling and trying to figure things out. And we're still doing our ministries. We're still doing our first love. Yeah. So what's, I'm asking God, like, what's going on? What are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. But I don't need to hear from some people where well, maybe you ain't doing something right. Well, well, here's the thing. Mm. We, you can't treat giving to God like it's Vegas. It's not Las Vegas. If no. I put my money down, then this is supposed to happen. If I put my 10% in, then this is going to happen. That's not the... But they're the, coming across that way. When they, kid up, when they yeah, sit up there I, and say, I, I, you I give the money to death, if you need a blessing... I'm just going by the televangelist. You need a blessing? Come on up here, give a thousand dollars. I I got the Holy Spirit is telling me tonight that a thousand people out there is gonna give a thousand dollars, and you're gonna be blessed today. You know, I used to listen to t certain channels on on TV, mm. and I gave the money. And I'm not saying I gave it just because of that. I'm, it was a lot of things going on in my life. And I'm saying, well, maybe this is God talking to this person to giving me a message, and I was doing it. Well, see, and this is where you have to be spirit led because this is what I'm gonna say. Just even in defense of that, there could be, and then this is where I give what God tells me to give. If somebody says, you know, if you got a thousand dollar seed, this is going to happen. If it's not for me, then I don't do it. But I feel bad. You shouldn't feel bad because if somebody says they do it, and because I know people that increase like that, just they did and what they felt they obeyed God to do, 
and and the, and what happened happened, and you can't discount. Okay, that. this is why I felt bad. Let me clarify this. Okay, we, we got thirty seconds. Oh, well, I, I'll catch it on the after the break. Okay, let's let's ca <laughs> catch it after the break. We're gonna go to the break. We're gonna come back, and we're gonna uh, let Reverend Lamont make his point. As a young adult, many of us grow up with our dreams inspired from movies, actors, film stars, and many people from the TV industry. We imagine ourselves to be that way, to be in the same limelight, and accomplish the same amount of stardom someday. BFN actually does that for a lot of individuals who belong to disadvantaged groups in society with much less access to the same privileges as us, and most likely face barriers and discrimination entering the film or theater industry. They offer many programs through theater arts and also mentor the youth with acting classes. It acts as a form of self-expression for many and gives them an outlet to practice and certainly move much closer to their dreams. You can contribute with your generous donations in enriching the lives of motivated young adults as well. You can also support BFN's cause by signing up for our BFN All Access app on Roku TV or any Roku device with just a small donation of $5 monthly or $60 for the whole year to get exclusive content only available through our app. God bless you. if it is for today's church. And I wanted to address, we had some Facebook uh, questions, we had questions out on social media. And I want to, for our pastors that we have, we have Rev Reverend Lamont Coleman of Biblical Films, and we also have Pastor Michael Hopper uh, of, and, and we'll get you to church, <laughs> the Los Angeles Church, church of Deliverance. Of Deliverance. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to uh, answer, uh, address the questions hopefully here. So, one of the question is, if you cannot tithe financially, because some people might be in the situation of getting the word in this tight, they just they don't have any extra resources. They got more month than money. Um, what is another way to do it? Is there another way yes. to, to tithe yes. um, uh, financially? That's what I was about, and that's what I was going to say. And people think when you and you said they tithe and they post to get back a monetary blessing hmm. that doesn't mean that all the way it can be and that's why i had a problem with some of them saying oh you give this you get this back you you trying to tell god and dictate to him how to bless you mm -hmm. okay you gave again like again going back to leviticus you gave your sacrifice you gave your tithe but you can be blessed in many other ways and same thing with the tithe you don't have to always be a monetary thing. At the beginning, it wasn't that. It was a sacrifice of an animal and stuff. Mm. The monetary process came when they couldn't make it and they couldn't take that harvest. Then you had the right to break it down into a cash value. And that's where that came into. Mm -hmm. So you don't always have to do cash. With us, you can do service in your church. As the churches are using that as a tool to get, to get financing to help the church. Well, maybe you can also use the labor. Or maybe, again, if you have a business, uh, business owners, we can do trade here, okay, to help the church and cut the cost. Uh, there, that takes a burden off of you, and that gives a needs to the church. Mm -hmm. Now, it got people getting in there saying, no, I need the cash. Uh, and, and, and then, and, and let me just say this, and I'll, I'll pass it on. Jesus didn't have no church. Now, here he taught in the synagogues. Mm -hmm. He taught in the schools. And that's what it was. But otherwise, his ministry was basically, after he got through teaching, he walked down the road. And then when he was walking, people came, and he dealt with the issues, 
but he was on his way with his with his disciples to let me clarify this too to maybe some rich person's house or a tax collector's house where they will lay that will spend the night because they offered their house because they had the resources that we wouldn't like because he just wanted to live in lavish because he had basically he was walking there and then from there they ate mm -hmm. and had dinner and then they taught he taught and preached the word mm -hmm. okay he he didn't have a, a specialized cart Okay, that he you he, he got in there and you drove him. He cartled around. He didn't have the lavish robes and stuff. He mm -hmm. didn't have all that stuff. And I'm not saying uh, you, that, that the pastors had to be in that and preachers and stuff have to be that way. I'm just saying we got to be careful of the message that we're giving because some people are trying the best they can in hard times. Mm -hmm. And that's all they have. Mm -hmm. So like the question says, if you can give whatever you can in a, with a good heart, you're being pleasing, not to that man, not to that trick, but to God. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, thank you. Mm -hmm. And what would you say? It, it's, a, it's a good question. And it really speaks to where a lot of people are at. Uh, mm -hmm. It's where I was at for the longest as well, too. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what two, two things came to my mind with the question, uh, and we were talking about it a little bit at the break, but there's this whole thing about uh, giving God the first fruits of one's increase. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's increase and so uh, there there's a need to give out of one's increase whether it be a thousand dollars five thousand a month or ten thousand a month depending on what or maybe five hundred a month it, it could be it could be a parent with a child on welfare right now uh, but if the increase and that's something that's another conversation but what is represents an increase you know that may vary for people but yeah. But that increase, a tenth of the inc of the increase, mm -hmm. is given to God back first. It's it's that's in faith, mm -hmm. because if I'm holding on because I don't have it, then I'm 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 doubting. I could be in fear, mm -hmm. and there's a these are fearful times as well too. But that fear could also be there to to prevent someone from from giving the way maybe God, maybe God would want them yeah. to give. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it was in, in Jesus' words where he was talking about where, where the, uh, the folks were challenging him. And he said, well, you know, give to, give to the, 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 uh, the emperor at the time, you know, the Roman emperor, give it to him. Yeah, we could pay his taxes. Right. We, you know, coin out of the fish. Give, give it to, give it, you know, give to the government what belongs to the government, give to God what belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And again, if we come from a perspective, and it, it, took, it takes a while to get there for different folks, it took a while for me. If it really all belongs to God, and he's asking to be able to give back. And it's, there's something about money. There's something about money mm -hmm. that it has so much on it yeah. where it is as it could be as influential as God, mm -hmm. as, as our Lord and Savior. It could be as influential. It's used as a great tool to hinder a person from being operating in all that they could be. Mm -hmm. And all that they've been created to be, Absolutely. and 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 it's part of the 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 bondage, uh, and and if but I would it goes back to that prove me prove me if out of the increase mm -hmm. not out of the debt and whatnot but out of the increase yes that if you gave he says he'll do it if I can elaborate on this point too mm -hmm. and when I gave about about the Levite priests mm -hmm. and when you made your sacrifice he got a piece of that that piece of that tithe went to the Levite priest mm -hmm. now some pastor would try to use it and say okay uh, that's given to the pastor mm -hmm. but I look at that was giving back to the ministry mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the church yeah and again and yes if we look at the and then it, that's God taking care of his own people because if you know with the Levites they did all the work there they're the ones that kept that yeah. church going and yeah. stuff like that. So I understand the purpose of that, too. But then that church also, which is his, it did stuff for the community. Right. Okay. Right. It was, it was, widows. It was, it was windows yeah. and helping the poor and doing stuff. Orphans, uh, yeah. And again, when I say community, I'm talking about your local community. I'm not talking about a community they choose to give to. Now, that's not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying because there's trying times going on right True. now. People need some help. And it's not just always, you know, food, too. When we talk about they need money, well, they need money also. I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to live Me and my wife was going through some trying times, and we needed our rent. Now, I'm a tither, okay? And, and I say this, me, between me and God, I give, I call it tithe, because that's mm. why I look at 10% mm. of all my, of my worth. 
I was a tither and I went to the, to the church and I said, we need help for the rent. Mm -hmm. They looked up in the book and they saw I was a tither. My wife went because I was embarrassed. I didn't want to go up there. Mm -hmm. So she went up there and said, yeah, my husband, the tither. And it's because, is he a tither? Yes. And then they said, well, okay, here, we'll give you half. Now my wife looked at him and was like, wait a second. We need the whole rent. We don't need half rent. And he's been doing this for almost five to 10 years. And this is what he gets back. It made her faith waver. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It made her look at that church like, and you know, you know, the, the wives. Okay, I didn't mean it like that. With them, but they're gonna say what they're gonna say, and it's like, well, where kind of church we at? What's going on? What's the? So it it made it hard for me at well, the time I was there because they put that doubt in the faith of how they help. Now where I'm at now, I'm happy with. I mean, I, I have a relationship with with the woman of God, and 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 when we went through trying stuff, they sent food. I have never been in a church that sent food to my house mm. to help me. Mm. Not in the churches mm. of my, my 50 and, million years. And, and, with, and with our church, um, and if a request came, I would pray on it. Lord, what do you want us to do? Yeah. You know what, what we have in, in our accounts for the church, but this is a request that came. Uh, sometimes, it, it, a lot of times, it, co it may come from folks who are, are members of our church, but it also may come from someone who's not a member of right. our church. But I'll pray, and and there have been times where I say, "Well, Lord, really give that," you know. I, I, in, in, in my mind, I'm like, "I, I want to give that," you know, right. kind of thing. But it, but if I'm, it belongs. It all belongs to Him, right? Because see, in that situation, and that's a real situation. I think that's where a lot of people may be turned off to churches because and they're that's like, the point, I right. mean, all this money I'm giving, where is it going, and was it really helping? People? And when I'm in need. Can you, can you help me out when it comes down to it? And, and, and people are getting, looking at you sideways and whatnot. So, but then if we're operating in spirit and in truth, yes. if the Holy Spirit's saying, give this, you give it. Because we don't know what the Holy Spirit's doing with, with that person in their walk. And, and, and that's the testimony and whatnot. And, and I, being obedient, I give. And, and that's, it, and it does encourage that person's faith right. and their relationship I, with God. Like, wow, it, you know, it's it not does. in me, it's in God, yeah. And, and, it's, and, and it requires a consistent teaching. The problem uh. is I, I don't think the teaching has been consistent across pulpits where it's concerned based upon um, the, the belief or, or the faith level of the pastor. Hello. Because if the pastor needs to, because there's a lot of pressure on pastors and, I, and I'm, to, to, to run an enterprise of a church, it's, you know, there's a business aspect to this right. that requires the money, but they have to believe God like everybody else. Hello, if they're true. used to, like we were talking about the so two true. the two dollar offerings, that's not going to cut it. So, but the so the teaching has to be according, uh, which in the scripture I was looking at, yeah, you were saying Second Corinthians uh, nine six through eight, which it says each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, mm. for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. If the spirit of what comes across the pulpit is that's what they're teaching, and that they're teaching the, the importance of the heart condition where giving is concerned, and then they also couple that with sharing them the business of the church and including mm. them and what they are doing in the community Hello. so that they understand it's transparent. that it's, it's transparent. Then I think, you know, that the increase comes that way. Yes. But, but when the teaching is, you know, we got to tell them it's 10%. Because you don't trust that if, unless you hammer that 10%, no. you know, at least I can get that across the board so I know that I can do what I need to do and run in the business of the church. Mm. So that's why you see, and I won't name any names, people can figure it out, where people are saying, you know what, I was wrong for, for teaching about that. I, you know? Hello, that's, so, the, that's what's happening now. The prosperity doctrine. Yeah. You're right. Because again, you're hammering that you're not prospering because you're not giving. And, and sometimes a lot of these people are not able to give that amount or give what they're requesting. And I love what you just said. Whatever God's already put upon their heart, they come there and they give it. Mm -hmm. Don't come there and say, okay, but now wait, you gave that 20, but I need 100. We need 100 people with 100. That's, that's pressure. That's exploitation. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exploitation. It feels like it. That's, and that's how a lot of young people, and I, I'll cut it quick. I had an intern that came with me to an event. And the intern was saying all that, and I was encouraging him to, you know, come and stuff. But what he saw was the numbers 
That's all he looked at it. It's like, how much does this cost? What is this about? And I'm like, in a way, I was kind of embarrassed because I'm like, no, it's not about that. And I had to get in there. And at that time, they didn't show the blues, what they show the whole program and what it's all about. So I had to try to, and my wife got on, no, you don't understand what they do and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But we shouldn't have to do that. What? They got that impression. Uh, 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 real, real quick, I think about Luke 16, 11. Mm-hmm. If we have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, yeah. who will commit to our trust yeah. the true riches? Yeah. See, because I think what's happening, we've allowed ourselves as a people, people of God, mm-hmm. and those who are considering yes. being a part of, um, right. of God's household, we've gotten so caught up in worldly ways of, of dealing with things when it comes down yes. to money yes. Yes. and all of this kind of stuff, where there are true riches that are there and available for us right here and now. Hello. And also for the future eternity. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's all coming down to how we're handling the unrighteous mammon. It's mm-hmm. the test. It's yeah. the test for the for the for the homeless person on the street corner, yeah. as well as it is to the wealthiest billionaire yes. in this world. It's it's the it's the common denominator that comes and down to God's looking at our hearts. Terms, uh, as well. Terms? Because again, I mean if 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 the church, if a person's church is struggling, and, and I'm happy to say we're not struggling. I mean, everything's being taken care of, but I'm clear. Part of it is related to, I got to lead by example yeah. as a Hello. pastor. Hello. I have to sow bountifully yes. in order to reap bountifully. Yes. And, but I'm not looking at it to come from the people. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at it to come from God. Yes. And, and God is faithful. Absolutely. And I think um, it's important for us to all understand that. And this is not to disparage anybody. No. Who God has blessed and they're wealthy and they drive nice cars. I, you know, I don't attribute that to a prosperity gospel. God is, is about prosperity. Yes, about making prosperity. a point. Yeah, he does. You know, so I think it's important True. that we understand. That. But to, to know that if, if anything in our life takes precedence um, over God, mm. um, then that's something that we need to pay attention to on the inside. So what's the real problem about the giving? Is it that somebody is requiring you to give 10% or if it's somebody requiring you to give period, you have to ask Mm. yourself um, what that's about. Mm. Um, And with that, we are going to take another commercial break and then we'll do our wrap up. Okay. How's that? Here's me too. Jesus Christ is the only one true God, John. What happened? John. Never loved you. I wanted to kill him that night. Who's who's the man's law guy? Revolution Bible Study. Again, I'm Chaplain Yvanka Firabi, and we would like to thank you for joining our show. We have our closing comments with our guest clergy today. Um, I will start with Reverend Lamont Coleman, and what are your final closing remarks? 
I, I do believe in offering. I am one of the people that gives a lot to the church because that's God's ministry. It's the kingdom. And we have to have been, again, as against stewards helping the kingdom, warriors in the kingdom, we have to get there and be that example and give. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to clarify that clearly. I, I'm just saying we have to be careful how we're coming across. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And what are your closing remarks, uh, Pastor Michael? Just believe uh, giving is a, is a heart matter. It's a heart matter. And, mm -hmm. and uh, once we get money out of the out of the place of dictating our lives and, and more following God, uh, just things just go better. And I would agree with that. That's a perfect a place to segue into the closing of our show. And what I would like to say uh, to you, if you're listening to this show and you want to be able to plant seed in fertile ground, We Are Biblical Films is an excellent 501 a C3 that you can plant into. It's tax deductible. And you're able to give if you go to pf www.bfnchannel.com and hit the donate button you'll be able to plant a seed to further the work of the ministry through the arts and, and film and theater thank you so much and god bless you we love you areas of the country rights guaranteed and an inquiry into police brutality. Oh,